Imagine this. It's a Friday night. You don't have any homework for the weekend, so your awesome parents take you to Blockbuster to rent something out. Being the 80s, you don't know what critics think of a movie unless you watch, read their reviews. The only way to know is by word of mouth. So you're walking down the aisle and you're looking for what to pick solely based on the cover. Your eyes are scanning through every selection and then you see this thing. The video dead. Holy crap, look at that. A zombie coming out of a TV with a cheesy title? That's the one. You convince your parents to rent it for you, you pop that sucker in the VHS that same night, and you start watching it. The problem is, now you're dozing in and out of sleep because of the slow pacing. So by the time you get to the end of the film, you're not sure if it actually happened or if you were just having some weird fever dream. The next day, you wake up with no desire to go back and see what you missed. Instead, you wish you re-rented Return of the Living Dead for the 10th time. That's what my experience with this film felt like, except with the whole blockbuster thing. Instead, I was scrolling through Amazon and Impulse purchased this Blu-ray. I really didn't know what to expect. I love the cover. The zombie coming out of the TV reminds me of my own birth. Okay, so I mentioned how I Impulse purchased this. Well, the other big reason why I did is because I saw that it was a Scream Factory release. Now, when it comes to releasing old films on Blu-ray, there's no better company than Criterion. And when it comes to releasing cold films on Blu-ray, there's no better company than Scream Factory. They do a really great job. I always like their special features. These have better special features than the Endgame Blu-ray. Think about that. Think about that. But either way, we're here to talk about the movie, so let's go ahead and do that. So grab some popcorn, grab some tissues, whatever you need to watch a movie. And let's get this started. This is The Video Dead. The film starts off with some delivery guys bringing a mysterious crate to Ethan from H3H3. I don't smoke. Uh, how about you? Sorry, buddy, but I'm not sure. Oh, uh, well, anyway. Okay, why the hell did we need that close-up shot of the tobacco? Did we really need that? Either way, this random guy opens the crate only to find out there's a TV inside. Later that night, as this weird dude's sleeping, zombies from the movie that was playing earlier step outside the TV. And I've got to hand it to the ring girl. She did a much cleaner job at getting out of a TV screen. The next day, the delivery men go back to the house to try to get the TV, but find the guy dead. And coincidentally, sitting right in front of the door. I wonder how he got there. I know the zombies put him there, but did he get a chance to pop out a cigarette right before they slice his throat? Also, just look at this scene. What do you think the delivery men do here? Do you think that they A. Call the cops, or B. Check to see if anyone else is dead? The answer is neither. They just close the door and probably leave. Great thinking, guys. We then cut three months into the future with these two teenagers, Zoe and Jeff, who move into their new house. Then the Texan shows up to their door, asking about a mysterious crate from earlier. Uh, it seems there's been a mix-up of some sort. There was a package, a crate. It was delivered here by mistake some time back. Why does every Texan in TV have to sound like that? Like, gee whiz, I live in Texas and I don't sound like that. Hey Patrick, what am I now? Uh, stupid? No, I'm Texas! It looks like an ordinary TV set, but it isn't. All lives will be lost if it isn't found. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you telling me this, but, uh... I forgot to brush my teeth, so I gotta go. What? Forgot to brush my... That's one of the laziest excuses I've ever heard, and just... What? I wonder what other excuses he had in his bag. Can't you think of a better one? See, I can think of better ones, right? Just right now, look. Oh, I have to go. I forgot to wake up late. Oh, I have to go. You know, I think I'm calling myself. I have to go. I forgot to wash my test. Jeff then randomly finds the TV in the middle of the attic and brings it back down. Look what I found in the attic, a TV. Great, now we have three. Come on, there's a lot to do before mom and dad get here. I wonder if this is what that old buzzer was talking about. I've gotta say, even though the music is 80s awesome, it's always so dramatic. Why did it have to be so loud and intense when it's just a shot of the TV? Imagine if I started doing that in my videos, that, that'd be stupid. 
Jeff then meets a girl named April. I love animals. Me too, but I don't count poodles as animals. Funny you should say that. I hate poodles too. She lets her dog off the leash and you can probably guess what happens here based off of this shot. Why don't you calm down? He can't have gotten far. You don't understand. He likes to chase skunks in the woods and when he finds them he tries to mate with them. Only skunks don't like to mate with poodles. So they spray him and then he really gets turned on. What kind of kinky fetish does this dog have? Mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah, that skunk spray. That really gets me going. Seriously though, why is her reasoning because he likes to mate with skunks? And the guy reacts like it's nothing, like, yep, this is what normal dogs do, you know? Unless it is a normal, I mean, my dog doesn't do that, but I don't know. He's gotta be out here somewhere. Do you have any concept how big these woods are? So don't you find it a little creepy living in the murder house? Living in the what? Do you mean nobody told you? Told me about what? About the man that used to live there, Mr. Jordan. He was a pretty famous writer. Anyways, he was murdered. In our house? Come on, this is a joke, right? Uh, I think we better keep looking out for the dog. Chocolate! Aren't you afraid of that house where that famous writer was brutally murdered three months ago? Wait, 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 what? You need to help me look for my skunk-loving dog. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Anyways, they keep looking for the dog, but aren't able to find him, which might be because they weren't actually calling his name out. Damn ADR. Unfortunately, they end up finding the dead dog. The zombie that killed him is standing just a few feet away from Jeff and April and follow them back home. Yet, somehow, our protagonists never notice. Later that night, Jeff starts to smoke the weed and the ripoff Elvira transports out a TV and is rude enough to take her clothes off. Seriously, you know how pissed I would be if a woman came out of my TV and then just took her clothes off without asking? I would be outraged. Nope, I would be furious. The woman goes back into the TV only to get quickly killed by the garbage man. Who are you? They call me the garbage man. I'm the trash man. <laughs> There's someone in the room with you. <laughs> no. He tells them the only way to stop these things is to put a mirror in front of the screen. Next thing you know, Jeff flushes the Mary Jane down the toilet. And yep, we get to see this entire shot the whole way through. Yeah, who knew pacing was a thing, you know? Just gotta make sure he go just gotta make sure it goes down. Just gotta make sure. Jeff then tries to tape the mirror to the TV, but gets attacked by a spooky hand. The hand slices off, and when Jeff attempts to get rid of it, his mom comments on just how weird Jeff has been acting. Nothing's going on. Honest. You are acting really strange. That's the way I am. I'm a strange person. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in, and I don't want to fit in. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? Yeah, if I saw my kid messing with a cursed TV and... Yeah, I think, I think I'd be pretty. I would agree with the mom. We then get to see some terrifying zombies breaking into the parents' house. And being... Well, stupid. The mom walks downstairs and after getting strangled for a solid minute, gets killed. But not before she irons out the problem. The zombies go on to strangle some more people. One of them even waits inside a washer and hopes that the mom's gonna go and check. I've noticed that all of these deaths involve some very quiet people. You stink. <laughs> If I saw a zombie, I would scream like crazy, not just go like oh. After quickly mourning the death of her family, April and Jeff welcome the Texan into their house. They're told that the video dead was the cause of these deaths. April goes off to aggressively brush her teeth when a zombie walks into the bathroom. She faints and the zombie takes her like he's Frankenstein's monster. Counting on you for a little help. You go out there now, I'm not gonna get even that. Cause you'll be dead. Yeah, video dead. They finally listen to the garbage man's advice and put mirrors around the house to make sure the zombies don't get in. But why mirrors? The reason for the mirrors is simple. 
The dead can't stand to look at themselves. I guess these zombies and I actually have something in common. At sunrise, Jeff and the Texan, who's by the way, his name is Joshua, go out to hunt for the zombies. You sneak up on me like that again, you know what's gonna happen to you? No boy, you tell me. Death and destruction. Whoa there. All this time I've been worried about the zombies when Jeff has been the real threat. Maybe the zombies are actually the good guys here. Forget about the world ending, it's Jeff we gotta worry about. Speaking of Jeff, Joshua ends up using him as bait for the zombies. We're setting a trap. A trap? Great. What are we using for bait? Oh no. There's no way I'm going through with this. I think this cut summarizes the tone of the movie pretty well. Now, doesn't that feel pretty off? Either way, some zombies show up, but obviously Joshua fell asleep and isn't there to help our buddy Jeff. Luckily, he wakes up just in time to shoot a few arrows in their chest and scare one of them with a mirror. Pretty nail biting, isn't it? They go out to look for the other zombie, but before they're able to do so, Joshua gets stabbed. Gotta be honest, I was pretty disappointed with this death. It came out of nowhere, but it almost felt lazy, like they needed to get rid of the character soon. <laughs> Holy crap, Jeff really has some high pain tolerance here. He's treating a bear trap wound like a minor cut. The zombie ends up catching up to him. Realizing he has a machete, Jeff does the smartest thing I've ever seen someone do in a horror film. He runs right into the chainsaw. Yeah, no joke. Our main character basically kills himself. As he dies, he sees April lie dead next to him. Small world, right? Back home, Zoe's attacked by a herd of zombies. After a lot of door closing, crying, and knife holding, she remembers that Joshua said that the zombies only desire to kill if the other person fears them. All they want to do is kill. But what if a person could keep from showing fear? So what does Zoe do? She invites him in for dinner. She ends up trapping them in the basement where they all start to go crazy and eat each other. They kind of tease you by making you think there's about to be some awesome special effect, but they just end up showing their feet moving around and a shot of a zombie eating out of another zombie's head. We then get the classic sequence of shots with the last surviving girl walking out into the sunrise. It's not like we've never seen that before. They could have ended it there, but then we see that Zoe has been admitted into a mental hospital. The parents come to visit her and think it's a great idea to bring her the TV from the basement. Earlier she mentioned how that was the third TV in the house. Look what I found in the attic, a TV. Great, now we have three. So how lucky is she that she got the one that's cursed? Either way, TV turns on, zombie growls, we cut to black, she screams, the end. So that's the video, Dad. You know, when I first got this, my expectations were a bit high for some reason. But watching it, I realized why this is the B movie and why Terror Vision was the A movie. The story had quite the plot holes, the acting was very cheesy, and there wasn't enough cool death scenes to make this a gory fun time. Also, whatever happened with that naked Elvira girl? And what about the garbage man? I'm the trash man! They never did anything else with that. It almost feels like those were part of reshoots, especially with the tacked on ending. But with all that said, I have to give my respect to the filmmakers behind this. This was obviously an indie film and they were able to pull it off. You can tell it was cheaply made and that's always worth praising. Making a $500 million film can be hell, so imagine making a film with a limited budget. This movie feels a lot like what a young filmmaker in high school would make, but just with an increased budget. Instead of filming it with their friends and family on an RCA camcorder, these guys did it with a film camera and a small crew. So if by any chance anyone who worked on this is watching, then props to you. You did something most people, myself included, have only dreamed of doing. You made a movie. I do have to say, the music is pretty cool. It has that retro vibe to it that makes it so charming. At points it gets a bit repetitive, but at least it's not just a bunch of bass like... Also, I mentioned this earlier, but just gotta say it again. 
I, I love the poster art so much. In the Shout Factory Blu-ray, there's some cool interviews with the special effects people that I'd actually recommend. They mention how this is supposed to be nothing more than what it is, but the type of film you put on a Saturday night and make some popcorn to watch with friends. I think that's the perfect summary for this film. If you go into this expecting a horror masterpiece, then you will be disappointed. It has a lot of issues, but it does have this very cheap, raw, charming feel to it that you don't get in a lot of movies. The only other film that gives me the same vibe is The First Evil Dead. So if you dig cult films, cheesy movies in the 80s, then I think you'll find some enjoyment out of this. If not, then I doubt this movie's for you. But that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of the video dead? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know. Until next time, keep watching the-